When I finally finished with him in 1988, and we were having dinner, and I told him, Mr. Bissari, I would like to go on on my own, if it's okay with you, because I have so much knowledge now, and I see that you're trying to slow down. And I mean, he was spending time on the Azura. It's a special yacht in the Caribbean, in, in the south of France, and he was just enjoying that. I, I said, I, I just would like to go and start my own you know, life with the wealth and all this. And I'm concerned not he's going to tell me, you know. And he was eating, and he looked at me, and he smiled. He said, Sharif, it took you eight years. I said, what is that, an insult? I said, what do you mean, eight years? He said, look, you labeled yourself as a hotel manager, you could have spent the rest of your life working for Century Plaza Hotel and other hotels. And then you came to work for me and you labeled yourself as the right-hand man of Edmond Bessari, and that could have been for God knows how many years. Now you realize you're a free man. Go with my blessings. And all I want you to do is what I've done for you, go do it for 10 people. You know, it was fascinating. We reconnected again in 1991. He needed something. I flew over and I've done it for him in New York. Uh, ironically, just a few years ago, after I'm not heard from him for like about six, seven years, I hadn't heard. He usually calls around Christmas with the usual, Besari here, when I pick up the phone. Hey, Mr. Besari, how are you? Sharif, what's new? What are you doing? And he stops talking so he can listen. He gives a few advices, advice things and that, that. You know, like, well, I'm going to be doing this structure in Puerto Rico. Make sure you have a Puerto Rican attorney to front you, not an attorney from New York. Why? Because my experience with Puerto Ricans, such and such and such. Remember this. It was like he steps into my life as if it's God making him call me at that certain time to say that specific. It, it's, it's almost spiritual. I, I, I mean, it gives me goosebumps as I tell you this. But I think everybody has a guardian angel somehow, somewhere. Uh, I remember when I told him that I do seminars in 99. And he was so excited for me. He said, I asked you to do it for 10 people. You're going to do it for thousands. You know, heck, if I get 10 to change 10 people's lives, like when you talk and you choke up, I end up crying because I feel like, oh my God, this is like my mission. This is like God wanted me to be here to guide some people in a certain way because somebody guided me. And if you do the same for others, can you imagine how much life will get a lot less stressful? 